Morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord with all of you today as we gather together to praise and to worship God. We welcome those that are joining us on Facebook and glad you're here with us on this wonderful day. A little cooler in the air. I know we're all excited about that and uh, excited that you have made it here today. If you are visiting with us, please find one of the yellow cards. Should be uh, some of them running around in the pews in front of you. Fill those out. Let us know. Also, if you have a prayer request, you're welcome to fill one of those out and drop those in the offering plate. Also, don't forget, if you're coming to our Wednesday night meals, to fill out one of the cards. We have those at the tables in the back and on the sides uh, as you come in and out so that you are able to register for our Wednesday night meals. Love to have you do that. Speaking of Wednesday nights, um, still doing the Roman study for the adults. It's not too late. We are in like chapter six, but you still would love to have you come and join us. We've got uh, things going on. Choir is still working on the cantata. Love to have you come. It's a great time of fellowship to, to eat and enjoy and then to, to get some study or singing in. Uh, youth and kids have their programs as well. So lots of stuff going on on Wednesday nights. We'd love to have you come and to, to share in those things. You can see our other regular activities, the Sunday stuff going on with Bell Choir and uh, the parents and youth studies tonight. Remember, tonight we're starting a new thing for uh, our Sunday night study. It, it is still going to kind of be bent a little bit towards parents, but anybody is welcome to come. Uh, it's going to be Guardrails by Andy Stanley, if you know who that is. Uh, he's coming. I sent out an email about it. If you checked your email, you should have got a little update or a little uh, uh, information about that, but guardrails, talking about how we need guardrails in our life. And so uh, a great opportunity to come and to share uh, in that time tonight from five to seven uh, for that time. There's a time in the middle of that where we help the kids get their meals set up and ready and make sure they feed and then clean up afterwards. But uh, an opportunity to come and to share. If you'd like to be a part of that, we'd love to have you on Friday, I mean, on a Sunday night at five o'clock for those things. You can see that this Saturday, uh, Friday night uh, after the football game, there's a fifth quarter party. It's the Swifties versus sports. Uh, if you want to be a part of that, do you want to say anything about that? <laughs> so you can be Team Swift or Team uh, Sports, whichever one you think is more popular. There's a lot of stuff in that if you know who made who famous, so uh, opportunity. So come, come for that on Friday night. Everybody, uh, youth is welcome to come and to share in that time. Uh, you see other stuff about the, the mums and the backpack buddies, uh, Wednesday night meals again. On the back, remember, we're still taking up coats for the uh, United Women of Faith coat drive. And also that Saturday, we'll have the collaborative leadership. So if you drive by the church, there'll be a lot of people here. The conference is, we're hosting a conference event called Collaborative Leadership and would love to have you come and to share in that. You can see the registration information for that on the back of your bulletin. Are there any other announcements? If not, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this time to be together. We thank you for this opportunity to share in your name and just to, to stand before you now, Lord. We just pray that you would continue to uh, lead us and guide us and that your spirit would touch our hearts and minds to receive all that you have for us today. In your son's holy name we pray, amen. If you'd stand and join us now for our first hymn, it's 467, Trust and Obey.
Thank you. You may be seated, but before the kids come down, just right in a moment, we have a special recognition time uh, from the United Women of Faith. Each year, the United Women of Faith present a special mission recognition pen. This pen is given in honor to members or non-members who have dedicated so much time and effort to serve. It is my honor to present this pen to Janie Lee and Sydney Hollinsworth. Congratulations. 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 Morning, everybody. Good to see you. Come on in. So, I want us to talk for just a minute about birthday parties. You like birthday parties? Do you like going to them? Do you like it when it's yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that. Your birthday was perfect timing, then your birthday was yesterday. Awesome. Well, her birthday party was yesterday, so you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's talk for just a second about going to a birthday party. When you get ready to go to a birthday party, what do you have to do to get ready to go to somebody else's birthday party? You got to get dressed. You got to get ready for it. Yeah, what else? You got to get in your car and go. You actually have to be there. That's right. Oh, you have to go and get them a present, right, to take to that party. Very good. All right, now... Y'all might not have experienced this so much because it's your birthday party. But I want you to tell me all the things that go into getting a birthday party ready when other people are going to come to your birthday party. Getting a cake ready, balloons, decorations, goodie bags for everybody, food, yeah. A pinata maybe, okay, yeah. Y'all having some fancy birthday parties. But you're right. It's a lot of preparation, right? Yes. Okay, you might have to line up a place for that birthday party to take place. That's exactly right. There's a lot of stuff to prepare. What, Emma? There you go. So there's preparations no matter how simple or how complex your party is. So... I want to tell you a story about a child who was having a birthday party not too long ago. This actually happened just a few years ago. The mom loved her child so much that she had planned this really cool birthday party and it invited all of their friends, his friends, all of the people that they wanted to be at that party and made big preparations. There was food. There was a balloon arch. There was going to be a jumpy thing. There was going to be all kinds of games and things for them to do while they were at the party. And it came time for the party. Nobody showed up. Can you believe it? I mean, not one person. What would that make you feel? 
very sad. And the mom was very sad because she was realizing that her child was about to be incredibly disappointed. And she had to go out for one last thing, and she met this policeman in the works of doing that. And he heard that she had planned this elaborate party for all of her child's friends, and nobody was planning to come. And do you know what he did? He went out. And he talked to everybody that he knew that they didn't know. And he said, hey, there's a party going on down the street here. And this child has a birthday. And we want to celebrate that. Come join us if you can. And they ended up with over 100 people at this birthday party. They didn't know many of them at the time because they hadn't invited them originally. But they had the best party ever. Because those people wanted to be there. Pretty neat story, isn't it? Could have been really sad, but it's not the way it ended up. And so that actually applies to a parable that Jesus tells. And that there's a party going on that people have been invited to, and it's a really special party. But all the people who are originally invited eventually said, mm, I'm kind of busy today. I'm really not feeling that. Or... I don't think this is going to be all that special, so I'm not going to go. And do you know what the king who was giving the party said? He could have said, well, I'll just have a party for me then. But he didn't. He said, you know what? If you don't want to come, it will be your loss, and I'm so sad. But I'm going to invite everybody else to come to this party, and I'm going to make sure they're prepared with what they need. All are invited to this party. And they ended up with lots of people who originally didn't know they would be invited to this party. And it was a grand, grand time. Jesus does the same thing with us. Originally, the Israelites were the first people invited to the party. And then Jesus came to earth to do what for us? You saying it? Say it loud. To die on the cross for our sins. That's exactly right. And that meant that it wasn't just for certain people. The kingdom of God, the party, was for everybody, including us. Amen? It's pretty cool to think about. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you loved us enough to invite us to your party. Help us, Lord, to know that because we know that everybody's invited to this party. The more we get to know you and spend time with you, the more we want others to know about your party as well. And that we can invite any and everybody because you want us all to know about you. We all have an invitation, and we thank you for that. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. You can join us in the back for kids' worship. Continue with our worship service now. The ushers come forward to receive the morning offerings. Remember, if you're joining us on Facebook, now's the time you can take your check to stick in the envelope to mail to the church or an opportunity to go online and give through our website. Uh, as we remain faithful and return to God what is His in the first place, His tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time to be together. We thank you for this wonderful blessing of an, a place and an opportunity to gather in your name. We pray that as we take this moment now to return to you, your tithes and our offerings, we pray that you would take them to further your word into the world. In your name we pray. Amen.
stand. Remain standing and join me for our affirmation from Romans. This is something that reminds us about the love of God and what he has for us. And, and I want everybody to notice on, you can't see it on this one, but if you're looking in the book, your first word is no, and there's an exclamation point afterwards, right? So that means there's some emphaticness to this. It's not like, you know, can anything separate us from the love of God? Well, no. No, that's not the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be excited that nothing separates us from the love of God. So when you say that no, we want to make sure that it's an emphatic no with an exclamation point afterwards, all right? Just like your team scored a football touchdown, right? Or a basket or a run. Although some of us that are Braves fans are a little sad today, but that's a different story, all right? So what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, nakedness, peril, or sword... No. no, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor things or principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord, thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you very much for your emphatic no. You may be seated as our choir shares with us a wonderful song.
there. Okay, the scripture reading for this morning is Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. I plead with Eudodia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, wherever, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Continue with our worship service now as we go to the Lord in prayer and as we've become accustomed to, uh, we want to lift up any of our uh, lights of Christ where we've seen God at work in the world, the, the rejoicing times that we have in our lives. And uh, I will say that that's the light of Christ and the body responds with, thanks be to God. And then of course we want to lift up any of our uh, prayer concerns or requests and I'll say in his mercy and the body responds with, Lord hear our prayers. So, we don't have any joys written in the book or any lights. Does anybody have any lights of Christ they want to share this morning? The choir did a wonderful, blessed assurance. Wonderful, yes. It's a, certainly a light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Okay, Friday we fed the football team, so certainly want to thank all of those that came to help. Uh, it went smoothly and was a wonderful time of fellowship for our own church and uh, feeding the boys. And it must have worked because they went down and beat Oak Grove, the number one team in the state. So uh, that is certainly a light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have Rhett home with us. You sure that's a light? Okay. It's a light of Christ. Thanks be to God. And if there aren't any other lights, then do we have some prayer requests or concerns we want to lift up? I'll start with the ones in the book that we have. Uh, we have listed Larry Cruz uh, in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Merle Rester in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. Michael Garrett in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. Don Williams' wife and his brother in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. John Walden in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. Sylvia Hollinsworth, in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. And Jay Brantley, in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. There are other names we want lifted up at this time. Lori. Gloria, in her travels back to San Antonio, in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. Dorothy McCommon, in his mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. All right, there are others. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you and we are so thankful for all the wonderful blessings that you give us in your life, Lord. That you sent your Son to die on a cross so that we could have this opportunity to come before you, Lord. So that we could be mindful about seeing you at work in the world. And that when we do, that we can be glad and happy and joyous. And to take a moment to just say, thank you, God, for working in this lost and broken world, especially in my life, Lord. Help me be the person that you need me to be in all that we do. Lord, we're able to lift up these concerns and bring these to you, the names that were mentioned and those that are on our hearts and on our minds. Just knowing that, that they're brought to you, Lord, in care and kind and concern, knowing your hands of compassion and healing and kindness and grace and mercy will be upon them. 
It's such a wonderful blessing for us to know and to be able to come before the creator of the universe as Abba, Father. Lord, we know that as we do these things and as we come before you and as we seek to, to be the people you ask us to be, that there's some things we're supposed to do. Help us in that moment, Lord, to just stop and to be mindful of those things. Help us to stop and to think about how am I supposed to love my neighbor? How am I supposed to love you more in my everyday life, Lord? What does that look like? What does that mean for me personally? We come to you now, Lord, and just ask for forgiveness in our lives because we know that far too often we aren't asking that question, but we are asking, what's in it for me? Or what can I get? Or what can I do, Lord? Help us in those moments just to stop and to come back before you and to ask for forgiveness. Praying for you now to come before you and just asking for you to wipe away our sin as far as the east is from the west. We pray and ask all of these things in Jesus' name. You taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. So the last few weeks we've been hearing about these parables of Jesus and today we have another one of those parables that he's teaching right before the resurrection, right before they decide it's time to get rid of him and send him away. These were ones that were directed really against the chief priest and, and every one of them kind of takes a step further and further and further and pushes them a little more and a little more and a little more. Last week we heard about the tenants in the vineyard and how they didn't return to the owner what was the owner's that they didn't give him. And not only did they not return what was his, but they mistreated his servants and even killed his son to claim the inheritance. So this week we kind of turn a little bit about it as we hear about a wedding banquet which of course is when Christ comes to marry his bride, the church. And this is from Matthew chapter 22, verses one through 14. Jesus spoke to them again in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused. Then he sent more servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatted calf have been butchered and everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. They seized his servants, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged and he sent his army to destroy those murderers and burn their cities. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited do not deserve to come. So go into the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed the man there was not wearing the wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So there have been invitations sent out to all the best people like God's chosen, the Israelites, right? The Pharisees and the Sadducees aren't just normal leaders. They are the religious leaders. They are the ones, they are the rock star of the day. Everybody wanted to be a Pharisee or a Sadducee. Everybody wanted to be a disciple of a rabbi that came around and said, come follow me and come and learn the ways of how to be a Pharisee or a Sadducee. Come learn how to be a better person. That's who we're talking about here. But these are the ones that seem to be too busy to come to the banquet. They make poor ex excuses and even mistreating the messengers that were sent by the king. We see this situation unfolding. We see everybody kind of recognizing, man, Jesus is really hitting it hard against these leaders. Our leaders, man, the ones that we're looking up to, he's kind of saying they're not gonna come, that they're too busy. Is that really what he's saying? Is that what he's trying to get out in this parable and what he's saying? And so we see the parable continues and he sends servants and they mistreat him. And of course, they even mistreat his son as they send him. 
And then we see that, so they're not going to come to the party. So Jesus says, okay, if they aren't going to come, I'll just come and invite in everybody. And everybody comes. And now there's a strange part in this story where it's not about who's invited or who's not or who's there, but it's about what one of them that is there is wearing or is not wearing. This wedding garment that he's not wearing. And it seems kind of harsh to say that we're just going to kick him out. We're just going to kick him out where there'll be weeping of gnashings of teeth. All of those invited, there's still one that decides to do what he wants to do. He doesn't clothe himself with a proper wedding garment. He doesn't do what's been asked of him. He doesn't put on the wedding garment that's provided. You see, the, the, the idea of the day would have been that there's a lot of people that couldn't afford to dress the way they're supposed to. And so the host of the party would provide an, a, a garment for them to wear. So here the garment's been provided. This person just chooses not to do what they're supposed to do. So they know enough to come to the party. They enjoy the party. They want to be at the party, but they just want to do what they want to do. Does that sound familiar? Is that any one that we might think of, maybe even ourselves sometimes? See, God provided Christ for us to clothe ourselves with. God provides Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us to clothe ourselves with his righteousness because our righteousness doesn't get us into the wedding banquet. It's not the right garments to be wearing at the wedding banquet. But yet his son died on a cross. And when we clothe ourselves with his righteousness, the wedding garment that's been provided for us through what Jesus Christ did on the cross, then we're able to stay at the wedding, we're not going to be tied hand and foot and thrown out where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Christ died for us. We got to put on his righteousness, not our own. Sometimes we just wander around. We're not sure what we're supposed to be doing. We're not sure. We, we kind of feel like I want to be there, but I don't know. It's until we accept and say, I realize Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I'll put on his righteousness, his right relationship with God, because I can't be in a right relationship with God except through Jesus Christ's actions on the cross. The invitation is here and it's waiting for us to respond, like Paul says in Romans 13, to clothe ourselves with Christ. So if we're bound hand and foot and we're throwing out where there'll be weeping of gnashing of teeth, it's not the host of the party's fault because they provided the garment for us. It is our fault for doing what we wanted to do instead of what we know we're supposed to do. It's kind of like a story I can remember one time when Rhett was a young boy, he was in elementary school and he came home from school one day and he had gotten in trouble because he was talking because he's a little bit like his mama and he likes to talk. And so he, I'm not looking over there now. So <laughs> it just came out, I'm sorry. So he was talking at school and, and we were like, well, didn't the teacher tell you to stop? She said, yeah. She told me, you know, Brett, stop talking. I said, well, why didn't you stop talking? Well, she didn't tell me I was going to get in trouble if I didn't. You see, he knew he was not supposed to talk, but he's like, well, if there's no consequences, then what's the big deal? Sometimes we feel like that because we know God is a loving God and he's a caring God. But then we hear this parable about someone that's tied hand and foot and throwing out where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because they refuse to clothe themselves with the wedding garment provided by the host. If we refuse to clothe ourselves with Christ and his righteousness, then where are we going to find ourselves? Where are you going to find yourself? If you're not willing to accept that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, where will you find yourself? We you have to move your marker in class because you're talking too much. Because we know we're not supposed to, but we do anyway. Or we'll be tied hand and foot and throwing out where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's interesting, as I studied this week in the sermon, they, they, they wanted to focus on how everybody got invited. And there was a lot of things saying that. But then there was this one commentary that said, yes, but don't run away from the destruction of the city. Don't run away from the fact that some are thrown out. Sometimes in this world, we get caught up in what's called prosperity gospel, where it's all about what, what God wants more for you. God wants what's best for you. If you just pray a little harder, if you just have a little bit more faith, it's all gonna work out and be okay. And I believe that God works through things, but sometimes those things are not easy. And sometimes there's going to be 
a separation. There's too many times in scriptures where we don't uh, have this done. Now, folks, I'm not generally a hellfire and brimstone preacher. I want to love you to the Lord. I don't want to scare you there. I don't want you running away from hell and running to God. I want you running to God because he loves you and cares for you because he's provided this wedding banquet for you because he gives you the wedding garment to wear. That's what I want you to be about. Not running away from something you're scared of. But folks, there's too many times in scripture where Jesus talks about this separation where there might be some thrown out where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is eternal separation from God for those that reject God's free gift. For those that say, I know I'm supposed to be at the party. I know who God is, but I'm just not gonna clothe myself with the wedding garment. There will be a separation. I know it's hard to imagine uh, a wonderful, loving creation, creator God, that loves us so much that he sent his son to die on a cross, that he could throw someone out where they'll be weeping of gnashing of teeth, but he just heard it from Jesus' own words. All these parables about what the kingdom of God is like and how there are some that are chosen that are, are supposed to be there, that wanna be there, that know what it means to be there. But when it comes down to it, they're just not. Some that know God, some that get invited, but they don't make it. Some that, that come in and they don't know. And some that know but don't wear the wedding garment. So where about are you? You see, it all boils down to a choice. We have a choice to follow God or to follow our own ways. Red had a choice to obey the teacher and stop talking or get in trouble. He may not have known that he was going to get in trouble afterwards. But that's what happened. Well, folks, all of us sitting here certainly have heard enough times that there will be a separation. There will be a time where we'll have to be judged as we're standing at the party. Are you wearing the garment that God provided? Are you clothing yourself with Christ's righteousness? Are you trying to make it by on your own? Because you can't make it by on your own. You've got to clothe yourself with Christ. Because you see, it's not always about what we do or don't do, it's about who we believe in, it's about who we wanna be a part of. And so when we think about clothing ourselves with Christ's righteousness, it's not necessarily as easy as just picking up the robe at the door and putting it on. It gets a little more complicated because first off, I wanna remind us all that God loves us all unconditionally. Remember, we are all invited, we all have the opportunity to grab the robe and put it on, right? We, We want you to know that, I want you to hear that, but it's also not about works righteousness. It's not that if I, if I just volunteer at the church a little bit more or if I'm just nicer to the preacher a little bit more or if I do this a little bit more, if I do that a little bit more or maybe I stay away from this or I stay away from that. It's not just about all of those things. You can't earn your way to heaven. You can't earn your way into the banquet, right? It was a free invitation from people the king did not even know. It's freely offered to us. However, once you accept the invitation and you're there, there are some expectations. There is an expectation that we are supposed to live the way the king is asking us to, to clothe ourselves with that wedding garment, to blend and be and be a part of the, of the festivities, as opposed to trying to stand out saying, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. That's why James tells us faith without works is dead. It's important to do these works. It's important to have these opportunities. Again, not earning our way. It's not trying to get works righteousness or anything like that. But if you've got faith, you're supposed to be responding in a positive way, getting out there and doing things and volunteering and being a part of different stuff. Makes me think about John Wesley when we first started the Methodist societies. He kind of started with an easy way to come into the society. All you had to do was want to flee the wrath of God. But then once you wanted to flee the wrath of God, what you wanted to be with God and be with him, you wanted to run to God and run away from the other stuff. You wanted to run to God because he loved you. He says, okay, there's three things that you're supposed to do. Three simple rules. Have you ever heard of these? Maybe, no, yeah, do you get to say something? Have you ever heard of these? Yes, yes, okay, well, they're up there, right? So the first one's do no harm and avoid evil. Right? So the first one is you're not supposed to do bad stuff. Stay away from bad things. Right? Don't go to the parties you know you're not supposed to. Stay away from things that's going to get you in trouble. Right? Avoid 
doing harm. Avoid the evil things of this world, right? But it's not just not doing bad that you've got to do. You've also got to do good, right? So avoid evil. Do good. And then finally, stay in love with God. Right? We say attain to the ordinances, but nobody really knows what that means anymore. And so we're saying stay in love with God. So how do you stay in love with God? What are the things you do? How do you stay in love with your spouse? If you didn't talk to your spouse for like, you know, uh, two weeks, three weeks, are y'all going to be as close as you were before? No. So you got to talk to God, right? That's one of the ways we stay in love with God. You know, we've got to gather together with others that are worshiping him and praising him. That's what church is about. That's why we function as a body of Christ to come together to help us stay in love with God, to remind us that I'm not in this by myself and that if I am starting to slip or stumble, that I've got someone that come alongside and help me. That's what John Wesley is talking about here. You know, being a part of, of the sacraments, communion and baptism and, and participating in those, participating in the worship services, using your different skills and gifts and all for all the different things. That's what we're talking about here because we can't just be a camper on God's mountain. Sometimes we wanna get the uh, uh, fire insurance, right? And so think about a big mountain that's sitting out there and there's a moat around it. And so once you cross over, you're away from the fiery pits of hell. You're away from the bad space, right? So you, there's this big mountain, but sometimes we get there and we get across, we get our fire insurance and we're like, I'm just gonna camp out now. I don't have to do anything. When I die, I'm going to heaven. So I'm great, I'm glorious. Well, folks, just camping out on God's mountain is not what God wants for us. It's not what he's called us to do. He expects us to get up and hike around because he has so much more for you to experience and see and be a part of. So much for, more for you to see how he's gonna work in your life, to touch your life, to do whatever those things might be. You've gotta get up and hike around because who knows in your hiking, you may stumble across somebody else that's kind of lost their way, that might be heading down and going back across the fire break. You might be standing by the fire break and be able to invite some people across to come and join you on God's mountain so that they too can come and hike around. But if we're just sitting at the campsite, we're not doing anybody any good. That's what we're talking about when you clothe yourself with Christ's righteousness. When you put on that wedding garment, you're saying, I'm not just gonna camp out until I die and go to heaven. I'm gonna make a difference on this mountain. I'm gonna hike around. I'm gonna see what God has for me. I'm gonna see the sights. And I'm going to run into the people that he has for me to run into to touch their lives and make a difference. So as we think about ways for us to do that, there's a number of different things to, to think about. How do I make sure that I'm living in and doing those kind of things? Well, some of us have heard about the green sheets, the everybody in ministry forms. In November, you're going to have an opportunity to say, this is how I'm going to clothe myself with Christ's righteousness. This is how I'm going to be a part of the church, not just sitting in the pews on Sunday mornings, but getting up and participating in the ministries. If you remember a few months ago, we did the stepping out of the boat concept and it had just a few of these kind of things. Well, this is the time you get to volunteer for all next year. Come first part of November, you should get one of these either, either in your mailbox or in your email box. And I want you to read over it and pray about it. Pray about the ministries, the different opportunities that you can volunteer for. There's a lot of things for children and youth. There's stuff about vacation Bible school. There's stuff about adult ministries, helping out with Wednesday nights and being a part of those kind of things. There's stuff on here about Sunday school. There's stuff on here about ways to help the church uh, throughout the week, volunteering to help the secretary or volunteering to uh, maybe work on our bulletin boards around in different places, how to care and share in, in different opportunities, to be greeters for Sunday mornings and opportunities to, to send cards to our shut-ins and to our college students, how to be hospitable, some mission and opportunities, ways for you to step out, ways for you to, to do that good that we talked about, that John Wesley wanted us to do, ways for you to make sure that you're staying in love with God by putting yourself out there, by getting up and hiking around his mountain and letting you touch someone else's life and them to touch yours. Because folks, that's what it means to be at the wedding party. Sometimes we wanna think, oh, well, that's just heaven and that's great and that's glorious and it will be. But folks, the party is now that we can experience if we want to. 
the party of serving God and, and being used by him to do the things that we're called to do. So that when that time comes, we're not bound by hand and foot and thrown out where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But that we can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what we want it to be about. So be praying about these opportunities. How will you hike around God's mountain instead of camping out? How will you make sure that you are clothing yourself with Christ's righteousness in doing the things that God is calling you to do in 2024? In ministries, two with and four Crossgates United Methodist Church with our congregation to make a difference here in Brandon and Rankin County and beyond? That's the question. So how will you clothe yourself with Christ's righteousness? Amen. Our final song is Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy. Because first off, we need to be invited. We need to go. We need to respond. We need to put on that wedding garment. So come and respond. So stand and join us as we sing. Come ye sinners, come to the wedding banquet that is provided. It's a wonderful place to be. And when you're there, know that you're supposed to clothe yourself with Christ's righteousness, which means going and doing, hiking around his mountain, not just waiting for the end to come, but to go and to make a difference, touching people's lives and allowing them to touch yours, making a difference in this lost and broken world. That's what we're called to do. That's what it means to clothe ourselves with Christ's righteousness, that right relationship with God. So go now in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.